oh my god. <laughs> like if somebody was to ask you what heaven tastes like. That's what it is. It would be those grapes or honey, maybe. <laughs> what if you combine the two? It could be too sweet, couldn't it? You Probably could, not good you could, for you. You could give yourself a headache. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, first things first. John, how are you? I'm good, thank you. So, uh, what I'd like to start with is, do you remember the first album you ever bought? Um, I don't necessarily remember the first album I ever bought, but I remember the first album I ever had, which was um, Thriller, Michael okay. Jackson's Thriller. So I'd have been about four, and um, I stole it from either my mum or my dad. What made you steal it? Um, God, I, I probably couldn't remember now, um, but uh, it was the only, it, for about two or three years, it was the only tape I ever had. Okay. In the, because nobody buys a five-year-old album, so, sure. you know, so it was the only tape. That and Queen's Greatest Hits, I think I seem to remember that. And now looking back uh, after all these years, do you, what made you like uh, those two albums and well, those two records? Michael Jackson's just, just it speaks for itself. Mm. He's the only person that we, that our band all agree on musically, okay. because he's just sort of a bit untouchable, you know, mm. I mean, it, 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 I can't think of anybody else who could do everything as well as him is just phenomenal and um, especially when you're young mm -hmm. you know I, I was just a huge Michael Jackson fan it was the first the first concert I ever went to was Michael Jackson okay. in Glasgow in about 1992 I think and what's the the spark so to say to to want to make music was that around that time that you got that it, I definitely got my attention seeking thing because that the thing is that I reckon everybody who ends up you know being a musician or a performer or an actor or mm. anything on a stage I bet if you ask the people who knew them when you when they were young they would say that they were an attention seeker and um Michael Jackson definitely started my need for attention <laughs> as a kid how did it manifest itself? Well, I used to dance. Because, you know, you're seven years old, you think you can dance to Michael Jackson. So I did, and I used to do it in front of, in front of the class in school, and school discos. And, I mean, I was probably terrible at it, but that wasn't the point. The point mm. was you, you desperately wanted to do that, you know. And OK, as time goes on, that what you what you want to do changes but the very basic beginning of it's exactly the same it's a let's do something you know there's this, this almost uh, instinctual response to, to doing that kind of stuff is it the same when you when you step on stage now it's kind of not the same now for, for different reasons but the reason for being there is exactly the okay. same because we've no other reason to be there for what other hmm. For what we haven't, I have no need to do it. It doesn't. Um, life would be okay if you didn't do it. This is the, the the doing this sort of thing is the one and only thing I've ever done. And I don't feel any great need to um, to investigate it. You know, it just just because you know. Mm. And, and like like I said, it's not it's not a need. It's just. Um, I have no explanation for it. Was there ever a moment then that you com contemplated something else? Uh, maybe when you were younger, where you saw yourself working as, as something else? Not, not from about the age of 15. Okay. I, I don't have another, I don't do anything else, you know. I, I, I kind of say the same thing a lot to people, which is, I really don't know how to do any other <laughs> thing. I've never, f I always waited, f I always assumed that I would kind of grow out of playing the guitar. I know that sounds ridiculous because why would you have to, you know, there's no need to. But I always assumed that would happen and it hasn't happened and I still have never found a single other thing to do. Mm -hmm. so, that, so I keep doing this. And uh, at what age then did you pick up the guitar? Was it, was it around 15? Like 16. Okay. 
um, and, and, I, and I wasn't, a, I was a slow learner and I still am a slow learner, you know, like it's, it's a, for me, it's, I'm not a natural, um, I, I maybe have a natural ear, mm. but I'm not natural with an instrument, I never have been. Um, I know people who are far more natural at it than me, you can tell straight away, you know. Um, it, I, I've, I'm, I still feel like I'm a slow learner, I still feel, feel like it's, it's a long, slow process of, of even, even, even finding a voice to sing with. I feel that like that's a long, slow thing, you know. And in terms of songwriting then, was that a quicker process? Did you know very early on that you could write a decent song? I, no, and they were, that's a slow process too, you know. I, I was 26 when, when the Fratellis sort of started doing things. Mm. Up until that point, I mean, that's fairly old in the music industry, you know. I, I, and even at that point, I still feel like I was at, if it was a one to 10 scale, I would have been about two. Okay. Right now, I'm maybe about four. Some people are just quick learners and I'm not. Um, look, that's okay, you know. Yeah. Um, but as for songs, I just, I don't know. It seemed like a normal thing to do. They, also, when I started, the, the very first band I was in, in high school, mm -hmm. I'd have been about 17, I guess. It was obvious that some, we were going to need songs and somebody was going to do it. And I, I, I just sort of decided it would be me that would do it. And that, that just continued. And okay. it's the same with this band. Somebody has to do it. Do you know then, I, I guess I know the answer then, but do you know beforehand what you will write about? No. No, and especially now, hmm. they really, but that's part of the sort of the intriguing part of it and it's where the excitement is, is you just don't know hmm. what's going to show up and I quite like that. With this record we just made, there was absolutely no planning at all. Hmm. There was no, we would like to make a record like this. In fact, but even when we'd finished recording it, we didn't know what sort of record it was. We never knew what sort of record it was until it had been mixed and we could sit and listen to it. And it's the first time we've, we've worked like that, I think. What was the so uh, first song then that you started writing after after the tour for the previous? Uh, previous or, or did you write already before? We, we actually, I actually came up with a whole bunch of songs in the middle of touring the last okay. record. And we tried to record them and that didn't quite work out. Mm. So most of them were scrapped and and started again. Um, but uh, it seemed easy. It felt easy at the time. We would, we wouldn't have recorded had they not had songs to record. Mm. You know. Do you know then uh, what makes a good song for you? Is is that something you can pinpoint? I still say I haven't written a good song yet. Really? Well, it means I have a reason to keep doing it. Um, only just if it excites you, you know, if you're excited by it. Like sometimes, especially with the, the songs on this record, there was a, a few of them where I would write them and I would sort of uh, turn into like a kid at Christmas, mm -hmm. that excitement, because it had come out of nowhere. And mm -hmm. you know instantly if you like it, you know, and you're just like any other listener. Mm -hmm. You're no different to any other listener. <laughs> because like somebody hears a song, say for the first time, mm -hmm. if you write it, you're hearing it for the first time as well. Sure. You've never heard it before. So you're exactly the same as somebody listening to it. And I enjoy that side of it. But that's the, out of all the things I get to do, that's the thing I enjoy the most, is getting to hear these for the first time. Yeah. G can you give me an example then of a song that gave you this feeling and then kind of how that went? Well, the song I, the Imposters that I just played, mm. it was like one of those songs, and I always say they're written, they're written in 15 minutes. Mm. It might not, might not quite be 15 minutes, but it always feels like it. Because they just roll and they, they write themselves. Mm. Before it's finished, you have, you have a beginning, a middle and an end, and you have all the lyrics quickly and you haven't had to try very hard. At that point, you can't claim that you wrote it. You didn't write it. 
and that's the I like the I like the mystery of that. You know. So so afterwards, then maybe now after some separation uh, in between writing and making the album, do you reflect on it on how how that pro process went, or isn't that? Or no, do you I, like to keep the mystery? Yeah, I don't really. No, I don't give it much thought. I just remember that it all felt quite easy, and the actual the physical recording felt easy as well. You know. Um, this whole period has just seemed to be very easy. The shows we're playing seem easy. Do you know why? Did, and and is, is it, did it feel different than with previous albums? It does feel different at the moment. Um, and it's easier because it is easy. <laughs> This is not rocket science, you know. Sure. We probably, or, or I certainly used to overcomplicate the whole damn thing. You know, it's playing some guitar, singing some songs. Traveling around, you know, it's, it's, it's quite easy to do, and I, I, it might just be that in the past we made it too difficult, you know. So it's all at the moment. It all feels like a um, a skush. Does a skush translate? A skush is a Scottish word for it's easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can, can you surprise yourself in that way then? Because you don't. Yeah, it's all a surprise now. Okay. It's all a surprise. Every single show has an element of surprise about it. Even though we're playing some songs for the thousandth time, I'm sure. Maybe more. Mm. At this point, ten years, nine years, and we've probably played some songs more than a thousand times. Uh, there's still an element of it that's a surprise. The whole thing is a surprise, really. Because it, uh, it's such a ridiculous job. Mm. It's a comedy job to have. That still surprises me that we still get to do it. Yeah. Because, because, well, what you mentioned that that kind of that you you still get to do this, and especially in in today's consumer, the way uh, music is consumed, and uh, you've been away for a while. So when you came back with the last album, were you surprised that that you were um, completely, completely, and I still am surprised because we've we 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 have no divine right to be able to go out and play to people. There's, there's people who are so f who are way more advanced than us and, and mm. who write, I'm sure, write better songs, who play their instruments better and they don't get to do what we do. And, and that's, we understand that. You know. But there must be something why people... There be, there's something to the sure. people who come like that. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm fine with that. Like mm. that I'm not, putting that down in any way. Uh, it, it, as long as it keeps turning people on that want to come and see it, then then it's easy. Mm. You know? 